All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use table objects in our advantage to combine some data together. So in this case, I have these tables. I have one over here, I have another one here, and the third one over here. They're not actual tables yet, but they are some data tables. I did do a video on how we can combine multiple tabs together and create a master worksheet but usually that works when you have your data better organized. So in this particular case, we have tables all over the place and that's gonna happen when you have actual work files because people will have some other formulas here, for example, to get totals and things like that. So this method will help you to combine tables in more unstructured data sort of situation when you have your table sitting in the middle of your spreadsheets in random places and you have a bunch of other stuff going on. So to do that, the first part is gonna be to make sure that these things are converted to tables. So they have to have some column names and if you want them combined, you have to make sure that those column names that needs to go on top of one another they must have the same name. So for example, if we have a column state and you need that to be combined with this state, you wanna make sure these column names are the same. So if this one is called region or something like that, then it's no longer gonna figure out that this column is supposed to go together with this column. So the order of the columns doesn't matter. The number of the columns you have doesn't matter. Now what we need to do first, we need to just go ahead and convert these things to actual Excel tables. So if your data is structured well, you can just click on this. Otherwise you can just select the table, go under insert and table. And you can also do control T as a shortcut to do this if you have a lot of them. See this shows up, it has headers, which is this column headers on top. That's fine, I'm gonna press okay. You want to go ahead and name these tables some way that makes sense. So right now this is called table one. You can either use this design or not. If you want to learn about tables and how to deal with these designs and everything, I have videos covering that. I'm not gonna concentrate on this. You could take this formatting off if you don't like it, but I'm just gonna leave it as default. I'm not gonna worry about it. What I do want to worry about is the name of my tables. So I'm gonna go here and name this table and you want to have some sort of strategy about how you're naming these tables. So you can really call them anything you want, but optimally you want to have some sort of key phrase or key word within the tables you need combined. So I'm gonna name this one division A. So this first part is basically what you think this table is all about. Just name it whatever you want, no spaces in table names as usual. What I'm going to do after that, I'm going to do an underscore and do some sort of key phrase for all the tables that need to be combined together. So for example, I'm gonna call this part. So underscore part. I'm gonna name it this and let's just copy this because I'm gonna need most of that. I'm gonna hit enter. Now this table is called this. I'm gonna go to my data part two and also make a table out of this one. Name this table the main part is that it has to end again with underscore part. And then I'm gonna go to the third one, do the same thing here. You can also write some sort of macro to make this easier, but for now, let's just concentrate on the part we want to concentrate on. So again, I'm gonna call this one something else again, and then underscore part. So let me just call this completely something different in this case. So I'm gonna call it data underscore part. Just to expand on this, let me do another tab and I'm gonna do another table which I don't want to be combined in this case. And I'm going to convert this to a table too. Only this time when I'm naming this table, I'm not gonna put underscore part as a part of this table's name. That's the name of that table. Let's also rename this worksheet. So now I have four tables, three tables out of those need to be combined. So this is where I'm gonna use Power Query again to combine these tables. I'm gonna go under data and find this get data section. 
And I'm not going to use any of this from file, from folder, or any of those. I'll just go to from other sources and just do a blank. So basically that's gonna get this started. So we need to somehow introduce some source to this. So I'm gonna go to this advanced editor and see right now the source is nothing. So what I'm gonna do after that source equals two, I'm gonna remove that blank. And instead we're going to use Excel current workbook. This is a method, so it needs to go like this. So by the way, this is case sensitive. So uppercase C, uppercase W. You see, once I wrote that statement, it gives me every single table I have from this particular workbook. You can also see that I did make this four, but I didn't make this three. But what happened is that these were a part of some filters that were applied before. So we're just gonna ignore them. So for me, what I need to do, I just want to make sure I'm combining these three the ones that end with underscore part. And this is why it's important when you're doing your naming convention to have something that you can use later on to filter these things out. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a filter to this column and go under text filters, basically just choose one of these options. In my case, I'm gonna use ends with, and I want it to end with, with that underscore part. And this is case sensitive. So you need to match the case to whatever you used here as the ID for those. I'm gonna do that and press okay. And you'll see how it filters to just those three tables. So once I have all of that together, I'm gonna go ahead and see there's this little icon over here. If you click on it, it shows all the columns from those tables that can be expanded. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press okay on this. And you'll see how we now already have that thing combined together, including the name of the table on the right. You'll see how it also figured out like which column is supposed to go where. Like for example, in one of these tables, there is no brands. It's just gonna leave them null and it's only gonna combine the columns that actually match. So once I have all of these together, now I'm gonna go ahead and rename this master table or something, whatever you wanna call this. And this is pretty much ready for us now to use. We just go close and load, close and load. And that loads it to a new worksheet here. We can just go here and rename this one. And that also is gonna give this table a name. See, it's master underscore table. So you wanna make sure whatever you name this thing, it doesn't have underscore part or whatever that key phrase you gave it as a part of it, because otherwise, as you start adding data to this, it's gonna try to combine this one to those as well. So once I have all of this set, now I have this combination, which means I can now go and add, and by the way, I should have probably changed this data to dates. You don't wanna do it here, you wanna do it in the actual connection. So I'm gonna right click on this, go back to edit this. You could have done this before loading it, but I forgot to do it. So I'm gonna select this dates and make sure the data type for this is set to a date. Then I'm just gonna load it back. So this way I'll have proper dates, no problem. So now if we go, let's say to data part two, and let's just rename this to region. So you can see what happens. Oh, there is already a region. Yeah, that's fine, region two. It's not gonna update automatically. You have to refresh this. So I'm gonna click refresh and you'll see now those states aren't here anymore, but the region column is also not here at this point because it wasn't a part of the original columns we expanded. So if I go back to edit this, let me make this smaller just a tiny bit. So if I go here to look what happened, see it says expanded content. If I go over that step right here and click on this gear icon, it shows me which columns were expanded. Now we have an extra column, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that one too. Press okay. 
And that's now expanded. I'm going to go back to the last step where we change the type and load this back. And now we should have that column showing up too. But you can see now it went as a separate column. So if I go back and just rename it back to state, then just refresh this. So this is all now combined together again, and there shouldn't be any region twos because now we have that blank. So again, you can go back to the connection itself to handle this. So we could also just go back and add more data to the tables. It would be fine. So let me just add a few more to this data part two, and let's just change the sales numbers to some obvious numbers. So 380,000, so I'm gonna reload this. And you should be able to see now those in here, see? And you can also add additional tables. So if you create more tables, and they don't necessarily have to be on different tabs, as long as you have a table, right? So I'm gonna do this so you can see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a table out of this. And we wanna make sure if we want this to be a part of that combined master, it has to have that naming convention I did before. So I'm gonna do table six, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Don't name your tables like that, but otherwise it doesn't matter. I just wanna make sure there's underscore part in the name of this table so that it figures out it needs to be combined. So now I'm gonna just click refresh. There was 21 rows, now it's 23 because now we're also adding this new table to this and that's that table six, see? So now we can basically just create any table with that same naming convention. And what's cool about this, if you did watch one of my other videos when I was combining a bunch of tabs from an Excel file, is that we were creating a connection to the workbook by linking to the workbook with an actual hyperlink. This is not linking with the hyperlink. This is linking internally because I use that variable to get the current workbook. So that means we don't have to save it to be able to see these changes. As soon as we make any changes, just reload and we're done. Also, you could move this file wherever you like. It wouldn't matter because it's not linking to a particular path. I just have that variable here. If I go back to edit, just to show you this, let me go to advanced editor. See, that's current workbook. And these are all the other steps we did to add to this. And you don't need to have all the columns here. You can just say, I only want this, this, this column. See, all the columns are comma separated. So if you're comfortable with this, you can just go and edit this code. Just manually basically remove any comma separated columns you don't need. Or if you don't like doing that, you can just go here to this step, expanded content, click on the gear icon, and basically just only choose the columns you need. So I don't care about region two, I could basically remove region two out of this, or maybe I don't want this other region as well. So you can only just choose which columns you need to show up in this master that you're creating. Cancel out of this, and that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.